to be involved with the Apostolate for Priestly Consecration. She asked Father Chris Alar and I uh, a few years ago if we would be available. We were very interested in what she was doing when we heard that she wanted to bring priests to Medjugorje. So we started our initial dialogue, exchange of dialogue with this idea of working with her, but then the pandemic hit. So everything got squelched and nobody was traveling and, and we were sequestered. So she reached out to Father Chris uh, back in the spring of just this past year. And by this point, Father Chris had been booked out for the next two years or so. And he has blood clots, so he's only able to travel so much. So she reached out to me. And um, I didn't think that she was going on a pilgrimage in May, June, and I didn't think that I was going to be able to attend that one. And I knew I was going on a pilgrimage. Father Chris and I were leading one in France. So there's a few people here, Tal and Terry, are here from the France pilgrimage. Um, so it, it ended up working out to where she was able to bring another new priest of ours, Father Tyler, and then it opened up to where I would be able to come as well. But I told my superiors, I said, look, I don't care if I go. Now, I had been given a spiritual year in preparation for my perpetual vows with the Marian Fathers and also in preparation for ordination to the diaconate. I had this deep, deep sense back in the spring that I needed to be in Medjugorje in October, in the fall. I absolutely just, and I've, I've had that sense two other times, and I was right both times. The first time that I had it, it was with Father Chris, and he had never been, and I knew that he needed to come, and we ended up getting a private audience with Father Hoser, and Father Serafim Mikulenko, who was the vice postulator of Faustina's canonization and beatification, came with us, and it was his last pilgrimage on earth before his final pilgrimage. So it, it was an incredible gift to him. But then we also had a very... Sp Father, please come, please come up here, Father John. Please join us over here. <laughs> You've been called forward, Father. You try to take the back seat and you get called forward. That's, how, that's Vincent, a humble servant Vincent, right there. Vincent, here. Vincent, give him your spot. We're just getting that back in class on my life. So, Archbishop Hoser in that meeting confirmed, I knew that there was a connection, and I could talk more, I could give one of the talks on this, on the connection between divine mercy, the message of devotion to divine mercy, and what's going on in Medjugorje. And he said that there's an apocalyptic connection of what's going on, and Father Chris added Fatima. And Fatima, Your Excellency, <laughs> that there's an, Bishop Hoser said that there's an apocalyptic connection for our day and age between Fatima Cabejo, he added Cabejo, Medjugorje, and the message and devotion of divine mercy for our own day and age. So that meeting was very significant. The next meeting I knew we had to come back at the end of 2019, the beginning of 22. At that meeting, we were on the, it was the vigil of the Feast of Mary, Mother of God. And there were about 116 priests, and you could not get into St. James, and this little lowly brother couldn't get in himself. And I managed to squeak into the sacristy. One of the, I, I just smiled a whole lot and, <laughs> and, and begged to the good sisters there, and one of them let me in the door. And I had on, I had on the whispers, that they, so they translate the, the homily that's going on. And it was Archbishop Pizzuto, who's the apostolic nuncio, from the Holy See to Bosnia Herzegovina. And he was talking about, he, he started his homily out that we stand here in this sanctuary of Our Lady, the Queen of Peace. So he that was an acknowledgement. This is the ambassador from the Holy See coming, standing in the sanctuary of St. James on the vigil of New Year's Eve and the Feast of Mary, Mother of God, saying that he stands in this holy sanctuary of Mary, the Queen of Peace. At the end of his homily, three different times he says, is Mary not the Queen of Peace? Because she is the Queen and Mother of Divine Mercy. So we know Mary here. She's known as the Queen of Peace. She's known as the Queen of Peace and Fatima as well. So... What is going on currently? How privileged we are that we are in, Mariana has said this, that Medjugorje is the fulfillment of Fatima. 
And Jesus told St. Faustina that the message and devotion of divine mercy would prepare the world for his final coming. We're talking about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart and Jesus in his triumph, right? So how graced we are. So to be here in October, I told my superiors, they gave me permission. So I wasn't allowed to travel the year before. It was almost like doing another novitiate. It was kind of humbling, actually. <laughs> I, I, I was... It was a hard pill to swallow. I, was, I ate about four humble pies at least. It was like week after week, humble pie. So I told my superiors, though, I said, I don't care if I go to the pilgrimage in May, June. I don't care if I go to the pilgrimage to France. I don't care if I go home to visit my family for the week on vacation. I must be in Medjugorje in October of 2022. So have high expectations of Our Lady while you're here, please. Ask her for all the graces that you need. We're still early in this pilgrimage. I already see souls being touched at a very deep level. Now we have fathers with us, and that's what Janet's pil- that's what her apostolate is about, as she explained last night. These priests have all been brought through the apostolate so that they can have an encounter with Our Lady Queen of Peace. Whether they minister or not, it's okay. That doesn't matter, fathers. The thing is just to come and be with Our Lady and have the experience of Medjugorje itself. Our priests get worn thin. The demand is great on them. You see that with Father Blunt, that people are coming, oh, lines and lines and lines. It's the same with these men wherever they're at. They need to be refreshed. And when a priest has an encounter with Our Lady Queen of Peace and his heart is touched and his life is transformed... Guess how many other lives are set on fire? That's why this apostolate is important. Because these men are going to take Our Lady Queen of Peace and her messages back to their parishes and back to their homelands and touch their parishioners and bring the fire that she has for each and every one of us, right? So have high expectations right now. Before they present, I just want by show of hands... I was talking with some people last night. I'm going to give a presentation on my testimony. I'm a Medjugorje conversion, so that'll that'll come later another day. Um, I'm going to give a a testimony on what my conversion story was, my family conversion as well. But we were noticing that there are several people here that have been suffering or their lives have been touched by grief. A loss of someone or something that they love and that has gone very, very deep in your heart. Um, Father Chris Alar and I, when he called me, he he gave me a phone call. This will be part of my testimony. not going to go into that right now. But he called me and wanted me to come work with him. And we co-authored a book together. And the book is called After Suicide. There's hope for them and hope for you. But the book is not just about suicide. It's applicable to any loss that we've gone through that hits the heart really at a deep level. And I was writing out of several grief losses myself that I was going through. So I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but if you feel comfortable, by show of hands, I'm I'm pondering giving another talk on grief and on that experience, and if it would be a benefit for me to do that. If it, we can talk on something else if need be, but I can talk on that and present some of the principles of the book. Who would who would have interest in that? I guess I should say. Okay, fair enough. Most most of the majority. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Now we're going to allow the fathers to present their story, who they are in five, six minutes. A little bit of your backgrounds, if you could, Father, who you are, um, what, you, what your own ministry is about, what parish you, you're with, and how it is that you ended up arriving in Medjugorje, and, and anything else you would like to tell us. Uh, 